I want to share with us today on a principle, something in God's Word. I want you to turn your Bibles with me, if you have them. And we want to bring out a principle that we want to invoke and release and unfold in your life. Something that God wants to do wonders. I want you to look with me at Genesis 1 and verse 26 and 1 John 1 or St. John 1 verse 1 through 8 and St. John 16 and verse 7 through 15. Let's look at Genesis 1 and verse 26. I want a good reader, loud, eloquent, to read for me Genesis 1 and verse 26. Can you? Somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only thing that man was not given dominion and authority over was another man, like himself, but over the fishes of the sea, over fowls of the air, over creeping things, crawling things, flying things, God has given man authority over dominion was placed in their hand man was made to be king king of the earth king of his environment circumstances you are not ordinary you are extraordinary you are unique complete and distinct Mm -hmm. And the scripture bears that out. John 16, verse 7 and 15. Can somebody read for us again? St. John 16, verse 7 and 15. Are you there? Mm -hmm. My counselor won't come. If I do go away, he will come because I will send him yeah. to you. And verse 15. All that the Father has is mine. This is what I mean when I say that the Spirit will reveal to you whatever he receives from me. Thank you so much. He's a teacher, good diction, and teach our children good pronunciation. Wonderful. I want to talk about the word comrade. It's not a communist word. The socialists did not derive it, develop it, originate it. But when I'm finished it, with it today, you will understand what is in this for you. The term comradeship comes from the word comrade. We grew up as children hearing people greet and hail each other out of a special relationship. You are my comrade and we are 
comrades. But you know, it's a Christian word. It's a biblical terminology and it has heavenly significance. This word is derived from the Spanish root word, comrad. This means roommate or classmate. A set of people that share things together that has everything almost in commonality. The Oxford Advanced Dictionary speaks to an English word that means a person who is a member of the same rank. We have come to know this through English as a socialist and a communist, but the root is Spanish. For example, people facing the same plight together, struggle, and have the same rights together. Comrades, we must fight for our rights, they would say, in the 18th century, coming into the 19th. In such an instance, the success of their cause was a collective one and one of similarity. It speaks to survival. It speaks to comradeship. But when two persons, when two people share things in common and there is a commonality, there is no greater word that you can use to speak of their bond or their fraternity, or their identity. When this word is invoked and it is used, it has several meaning. It speaks of welfare and safety. It speaks of equal provision. It speaks of prosperity. Where else can you find prosperity? Where else can you find a commonality and oneness of purpose, but in the kingdom of Almighty God? That's where people share things together. Togetherness, one anotherness, purpose. It depends on each other, care, and deep response to one another and for one another. A workmate, friend, or companionship. This could be a colleague or a person that you work with, that you have gotten to know, that you share a bond and a fellowship and a relationship with. A fellow soldier is a term that is used. Comrades in arm. Here we can say John and Peter are old army comrades. We some weeks ago did a study on Zebedee, Matthew 20, sons. Peter was their colleague, James and John. And they wanted to share a common position in a throne and in a kingdom. And we realize that Jesus said, it is not mine to grant or to give such a position to. But whoever will be baptized of the same baptism that will be baptized of and be Share the same fellowship, fate, destiny. It is my Father's will to give and not mine. Therefore, comradeship, Jesus said, is a privilege to give and to bestow upon by my Father. 
a spiritual thing, the essence, the real meaning it intends so that people would share the same outcome, views, and discipline together. A comrade is somebody that can be trusted in life and be trusted in debt because you're bond together by a common cause. There's one thread that runs through your being. You can identify with each other in comradeship. It is not a loose word. It is not a word that is easily spoken over each other. Hmm? Christians share this bond and this unity and this commonality and presence. It is what Jesus' disciples enjoy. Did you know that Jesus had the 70, the 112, but he also had the 12. And amongst the 12, Jesus had a special bond, the three. And amongst the three, he had the one who constantly, the Bible says, leaned over at his breast. And the one who asked the question for the crowd, is it is it I, Lord? I mean, when you are in such a bond and a relationship, you want to know that you are not the one who would betray the Lord. Did you know that in Jesus' church, he had one that was a doubter? Unless I can dip my finger into your wounds, your side, your hands, your feet, I'm not believing you. As a matter of fact, when he first saw Jesus, he said, it must be a dopey. Not a gunman. You know, if Jamaicans existed then, the language of the Bible would be completely reversed. We have a language that is most reflected, expressive, Everybody loved to hear Jamaicans speak real Jamaica. And one of the greatest discoveries is when you are abroad in a train, in the subway, in an eating place, and you hear somebody boss out a Jamaican statement. All the way in Zimbabwe, Africa, a Jamaican was passing through, and another man turned around and said, Yes, man. And he turned in the direction of the sound and he looked around and he identified with that man. He is a Jamaica. Let me tell you something. Anywhere Jamaicans are, the seasoning of their food. The cooking of their meals, it penetrates through the little tin walls of the houses that you are staying in. And it causes others, whatever they are doing, to be propelled towards the direction in which you are. And so sooner or later, everybody comes knocking at your door. Then want some of that. <laughs> Not true. It is almost said when your season run out, it's time for left you. Because your peace offering is done. That's camaraderie. That's comradeship. That's togetherness. Common bond. Well, Jesus built comradeship. Amongst his disciples. He one day. The Bible said. After supper was ended. Took. A couple of things. A towel. And he wrapped it. Around himself. And they said. What are you intending to do? He said to wash your feet. One of his disciples. Bow out. No Lord. 
you can't do that. As long as I'm alive, you can't wash my feet. And that disciple was Peter. And when he explained to Peter what true covenant was and is, that if I don't wash you, your feet, you have no lot, no part with me. He said, Jesus, wash my head. He said, Jesus, be at me. Right? Don't want to wash me. From head to foot, the Jamaican terminology would. And that's comradeship, where a master stoops down, bow himself, and minister from his heart compassion, love to his disciples. Do you realize that there are depths and levels of comradeship that we haven't started yet to bond and to bind ourselves together? A willingness to die for each other or for one another. Jesus as the master stooped down, took his disciples' dirty feet in his hands, bent down, and he washed them. We came up in a strict Pentecostal culture, you know, where foot used to be washed and brethren tell you the plain truth. Some of the foot them will come at church. The two of them long, the nails are unattended to. You even get cut if you don't know how to hold the foot properly. Don't talk of the stench. Jesus have mercy. <laughs> Brethren, we used to brace ourselves in Pentecostalism for some feet. Hmm? I and that braces you to face whatever. Do you understand? But you know what it did? It brought humility. It brought simplicity. It brought singleness, togetherness, one anotherness. Because you didn't go there for yourself. You went there for each other. And we developed the phrase one another ness togetherness sometimes this is absented from present day worship something that bonded us together surrounded us together so the disciples walk in oneness of their belief system in togetherness of their unity mm -hmm. They were blended and bonded together. When last did you wash feet? You know, we, we need to visit. We need to, to visit real Pentecostal feet washing. Hmm? I just had a brother, a friend of mine, came back from Burundi. Yes. And they had a communion service with 20,000 people, a place that is known for HIV. 
is a personal friend. Is Dr. Mitchell. And he says to himself, I hope they're going to expect me to drink. Because everybody is going to use the same cup. One cup over the female side and one cup over the male side. At this time, are you going to trust your God or not? That he's a healer of diseases to bend your heart. I'm not talking a year ago. It happened late last year. And he said, God put him to the test because he is the visiting guest speaker. Oh my God. This is where the Aki meets the saltfish. The gungo meets the rice and brings out whether you have inner prejudices or not. Hmm? <laughs> no. They want to stir up the muddy water. And they want to prove your test. And you know, in that service, the end result was not one person was affected by AIDS. It wasn't resolved by medical purposes. The blood of Jesus protected him. I am not asking you to do it, but it will bring your faith to another level. It will test whether or not you and I are worthy and we are taking it by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they said afterwards, a thousand of their doctors got saved because they saw what should be a major outbreak of HIV. People walking out of that service healed. University students hmm, received the Lord Jesus by the faith that was demonstrated. Would you do something like that if God asks you to? And a morning like this, hmm? God can do all things but fail. Anything but fail. We are to so love because love cover it a multitude of sin. And God is going to do some phenomenal things in this nation to revive the fate of our people and to send you somewhere. But your faith can be developed. You know, we come in on a Sunday morning, we're nice, we're clean, and we smell good, and we hug up and we kiss. But there are some places. There are some places on this earth <laughs> that is going to be challenging for us. And God is going to bring us into a place that faith is released in such an eye intense power. That brother that we speak about, Dr. Mitchell, right now as I speak, he is in Africa. And he will be there for the next year. God has some people who will trust him. And some people whom he can trust. And he's going to get out us out of pettyish Christianity. And bring us in these last days into a level of love, faith, trust, sincerity as never before. My wife and I was in Montreal. And I am not telling anybody's business. But we did not know we were in the midst of an homosexual camp and we were just loving on everybody and ministering to everybody and laying on and everybody and something significant happened i fell out and normally in a spiritual service i said oh god is moving god is moving <laughs> but brethren <laughs> I tell you the truth, prophet, I don't know what, what it means. But 
I am in the midst of devils and demons. And they are genuinely drawing on the spirit. And I flunk out for a while, a good 15 minutes. I wish I could say under the power. But everybody is drawing and drawing from Brother Neville, Concord. 15 minutes afterwards, I get up. They were panicking, they were fearful, and they were praying. Genuinely, in a God that they did not know, but believe that exists. And I came back to this life. I got up, and I started where I left off, praying. Just like Simit Whittleworth had a big pile weigh about a pound and a half inside and he's ministering for four hours till virtue just left him and he comes up. But everybody that he prayed for in that meeting for those four hours were healed of every known type of disease. Is God mad? No, he has not lost his mind. That man absorbed in his body all of their medical complaint, all of their physical healing, Smith Wigglesworth, so holy he wouldn't read a newspaper. A man who used to beat his wife profusely for going to the tent meeting down the road. And every night she come home, he would lock her out. And in the morning, he would insist that he get his warmed milk and his breakfast. And she would stay out there and sleep outside at his door and go back in, fix up herself, and prepare his breakfast for two weeks. But you know something? The result... The end of two weeks of crusade meeting, the first man run up to the altar. And when he run towards the preacher, the preacher back up, everybody knew him as a pugilist, a man who was good at punching everybody's life out. And the preacher didn't certain what he was coming up to do because he had a reputation. But the preacher and trembling knees stood and he was rushing to the altar to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Smith Withers' work became the apostle of faith right across UK and Europe. But God took him from a humble and a simple beginning and intoxicated him and his life with the Holy Ghost. Brethren, we need radical faith. We don't need Sunday morning church appearances. We want to experience liquid fire again in the house of God. Has God gone short? Is there no Holy Ghost? Or is there no one putting a demand on the Holy Ghost? Who will say, God, I want the tangible manifestation of your presence. Lord, fulfill your word again, that the very children in their classes will begin to speak in tongues. Lord, saturate them with the Holy Ghost and your anointed. In this time that we live, we want the word of God to be fulfilled before our very eyes. One miracle can cause a city, a village, a district to turn around. Like the city of Samaria. One man, one Obia man, one bad man can come to that place that he said, I want what those men have that I don't have and he offered to buy it because he saw and met a greater power than his own can we believe for this can we pray God 
in modern times, a man was healed through the Word of Faith movement, Shambak. And Shambak heard one message, and they told him, whatever you ask in his name, it shall be granted unto you. He didn't know any better. He got up off his hospital bed and said, show me the morgue where all the dead bodies in the hospital are laid. And they show him the morgue. And he said, close the door behind me and leave me alone. And he went from bed to bed saying to them, be healed in Jesus' name. And they got up dead, stiff stone dead, dead, cold, till them color change. And he believed God till they said, get that madman out of this hospital. We are seeing a living human phenomena that people who are dead are getting up and walking out, asking for their relatives. A woman with cancer in her abdomen walks before him and God's instruction, he said, he said, was to give her the biggest punch in her gut region. Now, listen, if God don't tell you and you go punch the woman with cancer in her she gut and she dead, but Shambak says she dead already. She had go out the door, right? But God tell me to do it. And he draw back his fist. Punch the woman straight through her gut. Like him, Hannah, go through. And the cancer drop out on the ground. Flatter it. The woman is looking at what came out of her. And the thing stop fluttering. She's totally healed. God's words come to pass. God is glorified. And the world don't know what to do with it, but to call it a madman. Brethren, the same power, the same God, the same presence, the same word, the same Holy Ghost. And I am believing God. We are believing God. That one positive report will cause this place to be filled numerically, saturated with the power of God. And we now pray, church. Too much hypocrisy, too much flesh, too much people keeping malice in church so that the Spirit of God cannot move as He ought to move. But if every one of us that is here today, we put a demand on God to manifest, to show up, to show off, and no flesh is manifested in this midst but God. Brethren, we must be hungry and thirsty for a move of God in our generation. I know we are getting to that place. I know what we have cannot sustain us. And we are not satisfied. We need the unquenchable, liquefied presence, God, in our midst. And just one resultant miracle. All those who are playing church, who are going through the rituals and the ceremony, will come into a fate that is real. The end is near. Nations are at war. Peoples are at war. And we are crying out one man of prayer. To say, God, show up in your church. Take over again. Let us see the manifested presence of the Holy Ghost. Touch high and low. We have an insatiable desire and hunger for the presence of almighty god whatever is in me that is blocking a genuine flow of the holy spirit move it out lord i'm willing to let go and to let god 
It's possible, God. You're not up there. You're in us. And we need a tangible manifested manifestation of your glory. A release, God. Come to your church. Come in your church and revive us again. A little handful of people in Morovia, Germany. Morovia, Germany came together for an all-night prayer meeting, but an all-night prayer meeting that lasted a hundred years of fire and miraculous manifestation. Every night they came, somebody got saved because God showed up. That's how the Moravian church started. In a manifestation of liquid fire. We're not following man. We're not following human fleshly order. We're just saying, God, because you exist. Show up in my church. Show up in my pulpit. Show up in and let men see you as you are. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Let my soul be filled with your presence. I'm going to ask us to stand. The idea is to provoke us. For desiring more. For wanting more. But when we go home. They don't have to ask. Have we been at church? They know. He follows us on the highway. And the byways. And we are intoxicated. With new wine. And a little place. Though 93 Maxfield Avenue. Facilitate the visitation of God. Are you here today? Are we hungry? Hmm? Has Jesus washed your feet? Has he served you communion? Has he brought you in as comrades of his resurrection power, his anointed? What he gave to Shamba, can he give it to you? Is there any desperation? Is there any need? Gifts are in everyone. Screaming out to reproduce themselves. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. 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 Robiende le boko satala landa. Rabio shondo lo bahaya. Yes, Lord. Raise your hand. Bo rashata la bahaya. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. Oh, how I need thee. We need thee. We need thee. If ever we need you, God, it is now. Take us higher. Take us deeper. Take us wider. Give us an experience. Grant us the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Let our eyes see and our generation partake of it. Let the nation... Know that God, the true and living God, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, Jacob's God, Moses' God, but now my God, in this time, in this hour, keep upon us by your spirit. <laughs>